Hi, I'm Charles Ngo, and I'm going to be talking about my recent summer project, which covers the synthesis and characterization of copper sulfide nanoparticles, and specifically nanoprisms, because of their they're becoming more popular in use for use in biosensing and surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. And let me I'm going to go in a little bit about LSPR or localized surface plasma resonance, which is something that metallic nanoparticles such as copper sulfide exhibit when they interact with light. So what happens is that their free electrons get excited from the valence band to the conduction band. And this causes an oscillation of electrons. And this oscillation of electrons in turn causes a shift in the, the electromagnetic field around the particle volume. And What's special about copper, copper nail particles is that as a semiconductor, it, can, it has a tunable carrier density, meaning that you can dope it with other metals like tin or zinc to shift its LSPR peak more into, deeper into the IR spectrum. And I'm working with, and nanoprisms fit under a category of anisotropic nanoparticles because of its uneven charge distribution, meaning that for nanoprisms, most of the carrier density is at its vertices, as shown right here, whereas compared to a disk, it would be a more uniform charge distribution. And these, char th these higher densities of charges causes a higher shift in higher absorption of light based on its size and shape and how these uh, anisotropic particles are formed for example is through the introduction of halide ions now this summer I've worked with two different methods of fabricating these nail prisms one being a two-phase synthesis where y the first step in involves a nucleation step of growing s small copper sulfide seeds and the second step involves the nail prism growth where these seeds combine to form larger nail particles such as nail prisms. The next method uh, that I used was a single phase synthesis where all the reagents were combined into one solvent and they were reacted to form these nail prisms. As shown here, it, you can see that the single phase synthesis would be more favored due to its yield of more uniform shape and size particles. And the effect, and the reason why these anisotropic, anisotropic particles form from halide ions is because of the higher bond energies between the halide ions and the particles. This may cause a growth in certain directions or inhibit growth in certain directions, causing different size particles, such as, and you can get prisms, uh, cubes, or rods, or any shape that you want. And the next step was to go into the, go into the size and shape control. And what we noticed is that when you leave the, the reaction to go on for a longer time, you get larger nanocrystals or nanoprisms, probably due to the introduction of halide ions. But as you can see here, it, a longer reaction time doesn't always yield the completely similar particles. And what you see here is a ripening effect where you, you have prisms with halide ions growing while the disk particles without halide ions shrinking. So it's like if you have a bully stealing candy from a little kid, then the, the bully is gonna get fatter. So, what's, so the next step was a, we tried was a seed mediated synthesis where we, it's similar to the single phase synthesis, where first we produce the seed particles and then we in, and then for each growth we do the same reaction but we int but then we add in the seed or the previous growth particles 
to see them grow larger and larger. As you can see here, this is a seed and then the first growth, second growth, third growth, and this is yielding better results. And here you can see a, an IR spectra of these particles. As you can see, the shape plays a big role into the, the sharpness of the LSPR peaks. And some, my conclusions for this summer is that halide ions play a big role into the shape of these of nanoparticles that are being made. And um, triangular nanoprisms go, undergo a ripening effect, which can help control size, the size of nanoparticles of any shape. And, at, and uh, uh, what you can do with these nanoprisms is that you can put them in the rays. Since they have really strong interactions with their, have high intensity LSPR peaks at their tips alone already, you can arrange them into a bow tie configuration where you can have even stronger interactions and can find even more or different wavelengths of light. And I'd like to thank Tau Lab and Cal IT2 for the funding, for their help and funding in this summer research project. Thank you.